I'm going to talk about the PTO on a John Deere uh, 4710. The 4710, the 4610, and the 4510 all have a similar uh, valve, PTO valve. And the way the valve works is it runs off of hydraulic pressure uh, from the implement uh, pump, which is the which is the pump that sits behind the um, behind the engine area. And the way these work is there's a simple um, solenoid, which is just the switch part of the valve. The electric solenoid is activated and then the plunger inside the solenoid uh, lets uh, the flow of fluid into the valve area. Well, the, the other area within this valve that is problematic, I would say, and I've only seen this once and I've done um, a ton of the 4000 series machines just like this. And usually it's in, you know, 10, 10 times out of 10, it's just the solenoid switch and or the plunger that's behind the solenoid that's stuck. And the reason is, is because someone either had a backhoe on this machine and either never used the PTO that much or um, never used it at all. And it just uh, sat, right? So, so both the solenoid switch is the first place you want to check if the PTO does not engage at all. And I bet you it's probably the solenoid switch. If the PTO engages, but it doesn't seem like it has power and or it slips as soon as you go to use the implement, then most likely the clutch is not fully engaged because the, the pressure on the PTO valve is too low. And the way this works is the pressure on the valve uh, will actually build up to about 200 P PSI, I believe is the, is the spec where it needs to be. And that puts pressure on the PTO and slides the clutch out and engages the clutch all the way. So, so the, the symptom could be PTO works, the implement turns, and then I go to use it and it has no power and then the PTO will come to a stop, right? And you can start that process all over again and it will just never be right. Um, <clears throat> I've only seen this once, and, uh, but I wanted to do a video on how you check the pressure at the valve. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get yourself a, a pressure test kit. Any hydraulic pressure test kit will work. I'm not gonna try to sell you on one specific brand. I happen to get one that has a bunch of different, um, bunch of different, uh, what you call it, gauges and it, and it comes with a bunch of different hoses so you can run the hose through the area on the machine you're testing and then you can sit on the machine and you can start it off, right? So the way this all works is you're gonna, you're gonna pull the test port plug on the valve and this is, there's a, there's a bunch of different test ports on these valves for different, for different issues. But this is the, this is the PTO pressure uh, test port, right? And you're going to take your, um, your test gauge with your test connector and hose, connect it into that port, and then you're going to engage the PTO and start the machine. You're going to look for about 200 PSI. It's kind of hard to see this one because it's fuzzy, but about 200 PSI at that test port, that's what the uh, technical manual, the John Deere technical manual calls for. So um, before before I fixed it, it was getting about 25 pounds. So it was, again, just enough to seem normal with nothing on there and it would run and seem normal uh, at first when you put an attachment on there and but then the attachment just didn't have power. And it was because I was only getting 25 pounds of pressure uh, at the test port and you need about 200 pounds to engage the, the PTO all the way. So the, the root cause to, to all this uh, low pressure was a spool valve. There is a spool valve in here, these three screws, you pull this cap off this spool valve and then the whole valve is behind there and all you have to do is take a, um, you take a couple, uh, you take the nut from here and you pull off the outer, outer plunger on the valve, it's about two inches long. And then within there, behind that plunger is the spool valve. If that spool valve is stuck, you're gonna get the pressure wherever it's stuck. So for example, if it's stuck kind of three quarters in and out, you might get 50 PSI. If it's stuck closed, you might get more like 25 PSI in my case. So what you wanna do is get to that spool valve and you just wanna push on it with your finger. You can take a, an extension, a quarter inch extension, put it in there and just push in and out on that spool valve and you'll, you'll feel it free up. It's just a little spring mechanism in there and the spring is gonna push in further with more pressure and it's gonna release out more with less pressure to control the on off of the uh, PTO itself, right? So, so that's it. So once you test all that and you get low pressure, open up the spool valve and then you wanna push it in and out and get some even WD-40 in there and just kinda of get that valve to kinda of free up again. And, and again, the reason why it's, it's hung up is because no one's been using the PTO. This machine has a backhoe on it. 
maybe nobody's ever used the PTO, right? So it's, it's a little bit hung up in there. You free it up and everything returns back to normal. I'm gonna fire this up just to show you what the pressure looks like. So that's 200 PSI, that's exactly where it needs to be and the problem is solved. So if you have an issue like this, um, just reach out to my channel or follow this procedure to test the uh, test port pressure. And I bet you if it's not the solenoid issue, which is you know usually what it is when it doesn't start itself, the PTO doesn't start at all. If it starts and it's got low pressure and it's weak, go to the test pressure port, test it, and I bet you the spool valve is either stuck or the spool valve needs to be serviced. So I uh, hope this is helpful. If you have any more questions and you're, you're kind of going through this on your machine and you're not sure what I'm exactly what I'm saying on some of this stuff, just reach out on my channel.